The Faith I Live By, a devotional by Ellen G. White. The First Marriage And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Genesis 2.18 Man was not made to dwell in solitude. He was to be a social being. Without companionship, the beautiful scenes and delightful employments of Eden would have failed to yield perfect happiness. Even communion with angels could not have satisfied his desire for sympathy and companionship. There was none of the same nature to love and to be loved. God himself gave Adam a companion. He provided an help meet for him, a helper corresponding to him, one who was fitted to be his companion, and who could be one with him in love and sympathy. Eve was created from a rib taken from the side of Adam, signifying that she was not to control him as the head, nor to be trampled under his feet as an inferior, but to stand by his side as an equal, to be loved and protected by him. A part of man, bone of his bone, and flesh of his flesh, she was his second self, showing the close union and the affectionate attachment that should exist in this relation. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it. God celebrated the first marriage. Thus the institution has for its originator, the creator of the universe. Marriage is honorable. It was one of the first gifts of God to man. And it is one of the two institutions that after the fall, Adam brought with him beyond the gates of paradise. When the divine principles are recognized and obeyed in this relation, marriage is a blessing. It guards the purity and happiness of the race. It provides for men's social needs. It elevates the physical, the intellectual, and the moral nature. The family tie is the closest, the most tender, and sacred of any on earth. It was designed to be a blessing to mankind and it is a blessing wherever the marriage covenant is entered into intelligently, in the fear of God and with due consideration for its responsibilities.